Good afternoon, everyone. And uh, it is, uh, as always, a delight to uh, welcome High Representative Ashton. Um, Representative Ashton, you mentioned uh, the celebrations in Juba um, when South Sudan declared independence. But if Palestine. Uh, the Assad regime will not succeed in deflecting the world's attention from the real story unfolding in Syria. This is not about America or France or any other country. This is about the legitimate aspirations of the Syrian people for dignity, universal rights, and the rule of law. <laughs> I begin by endorsing what uh, Hillary has said about what's happening in terms of the embassies of the United States uh, and France in Syria. This is very alarming. We see the dialogue beginning. We don't see the opposition included effectively by President Assad. It is really important that he takes note again of what we've, we've called for consistently, which is the end to violence. And we continue to use our political and economic power to try and get him to turn away from uh, what is a terrible situation. Um, we've been talking, as indeed I'm sure Secretary Clinton has, with Turkey about the refugees who are coming across the border. And I've had teams going to talk to them about the situation they found themselves in. And it's very grave indeed. The stories that they tell us really do reflect uh, the information that you will be uh, and have been receiving as well. Position on Palestine being independent in the post-Gaddafi world, with our colleagues uh, under UN leadership, but with the African Union, the Arab League, with the OIC, with many others, that we continue to get ready for the post-Gaddafi uh, world of Libya, which will be, we know, significantly better for the people there. We think particularly, of course, of Egypt and Tunisia, I've appointed an EU special representative to look at the area of North Africa and to support the people by bringing together the European Union institutions and member states, especially with the European Investment Bank, the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, to provide additional resources. We've been able to find about five to seven billion euros additionally, which will help to support infrastructure, public and private sector engagement Prime Minister Tachi from Kosovo and I had lunch last week and we talked about the potential of what we're trying to do with the discussions which is really to make life easier in practical ways for the people in the north of Kosovo. So it's engaged with issues like driving license plates, uh, ways in which we can help the movement of people between the two.